client, which was uh, the, the primary tool within our toolkit that we're calling OptiGuardian. Nobody likes SMAC. Uh, SMAC stood for Smart Meter Optical Communications Kit. Uh, I thought it was okay, but you know, we decided to change the name to OptiGuard so that the utilities would you know, not uh, think it's me. Um, we were actually going to name it the Smart Meter Optical um, Assessment Toolkit, uh, SMOTE. Um, they didn't like that either, so we went with OptiGuard. Thanks, John. Sorry. Okay, if you weren't in here before, um, you know, get permission. Okay, so the optical client. Uh, basically, it's just a whole bunch of functions that will do what the meter manufacturer's tools do. do. But uh, actually, this is the first bullet point. I need to point this out because I was asked to do it. This is the bullet point I was asked to, uh, asked to add. Okay. In order to walk up to a meter at the side of your house and use our tool, you have to have a security code. It doesn't mean that you can't do things without it. And that's exactly what our tool is designed to do. Okay? So we don't need the security code to run it. But if you want to make modifications to it, you have to have, you have to do stuff like the research that I just talked about in order to get it. Or you need to pay somebody to give it to you. But if you don't, so if you don't have it, but you have the tool, you just can't run around rampantly changing and making modifying things. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to test functionality that the media manufacturer software don't give you. Okay? So you can run stuff without a password to see if, are there any tables, which is where the, the stuff that contains the data, the configuration data, the settings and so forth, they call them tables. So you can pull that table information out. Now, you can attempt to pull it out without a password. Some manufacturers protect everything. Some manufacturers only protect the ones that they think are important for security. But they've made that decision instead of the utilities. Now we, can, now we have something that the utilities can test, use to test, pull that information out and say, you know what, we don't mind about tables one, two, and three, but you really need to uh, table number 15. I can read that without a password and you need to protect that. Okay? Same with procedures. Did somebody mess up in development and leave a procedure in there that allows you to do something such as disconnect a meter without a password? Without the, with the regular manufacturer tools, you can't test for that. But now we can test for it as well. Actually, what we were able to do, is, once we had the security code, now I was able to run every procedure at the same time. So I ran every procedure, and then with, okay, first I just sent no data. I didn't get any data, no, no joy. But then I sent a zero. And I'm sitting there, I'm waiting, and all of a sudden, the meter goes, cut, cut. And that's the sound of the meter turn off. I'm like, oh. What? <laughs> so I, I quickly look because I got I had some good logging in there. I'm like, okay, this number right there. And so then I just ran that one procedure with a zero and nothing happened. Crap. Oh wait, now I send a one. Kaklum. <laughs> meter turns back on. I'm like, Woo! <laughs> now I can turn this meter on and off. Awesome. And then of course, you know, I, I just didn't go on from there. I, I called everybody. And made them listen to the clump. He called my friends. I'm like, what is that? I'm like, clump. <laughs> some new, some didn't. Okay. But it, now we're showing that we can do this. I don't need media manufacturer to uh, um, software to run this. So I can develop it, criminals can develop it as well. But what's, what's great is now we have an assessment tool to generate that data, to do those types of things so that they can start looking for. Um, uh, unfortunately, one meter manufacturer found out that uh, if I ran all the procedures at the same time, that uh, so I did it, and then it started acting a little funny, but not too funny. So I'm trying to figure out what, how to reconfigure it, and then I look over at the screen and it says uncalibrated on. Uncalibrated. I don't know if that is. I don't see it. So I, I call my contact up and says, Oh yeah, um, yeah, utilities can't fix that. Uh, do you have to send it back to the vendor? I was like, oh, so I have the security code and I can run every procedure. I just ripped your meter. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, woohoo! <laughs> but, it's, uh, um, but, but now, you, now we can tell the utilities that, and we can pass this information back to the vendors, and they can start looking into it because we're generating anomalous, anomalous activity that they weren't expecting. 
I'm kind of moving on because uh, we're getting short, so I want to make sure I get to some of the mitigations. Uh, iChart is basically just brute force method. Okay, I don't need the password to log in, attempt to log in. Okay, I can brute force it just like any other service. Okay, but what's great is I have a tool now. I guess go through all that memory that I dumped before, and I generate every single password that's in there and unique it. The problem is, is that I have to do that association each time I do the login. So even though I uniqued it and got 12,277 passwords, it's still going to set, maybe take me seven hours to run it. And I've never actually gotten my tool to run for more than about 20 minutes consistently. I, mean, I can build some you know, smartness into it and just restart it. You know, but th that's kind of important for utilities to know. Okay? Now, can they, can they detect those brute force logins? You know, also, you know, are they, I can generate my own dictionary. I don't have to uh, get one out of memory. So are they using stuff like you know, the utility name as the password, the vendor name as the password? Okay, so you can develop your own dictionary files and generate that kind of thing. I was going to give a demo, and we thought about it. Um, but then something kind of dawned on me when I was thinking about my demo uh, for some kind of black hat. And I realized that even if I show you the demo, even if I have a meter up here and I can let you hear the clump because it's cool. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm really showing you anything. I'm showing you something that I can do with a security code on one meter. Okay? And, and there's at least seven different types of meter manufacturers out there, and they all develop multiple types of meters. So I'm not really showing you anything. What I would really like to show you is that I can make the meter clunk, and then I can point over to the rest of the solution and say, here's how we detect it. You know? Because it's, that's what I did. I got on the phone with one of my clients, I turned the meter off, and he's looking at his logs and goes, I can see it, I'm like, screenshot that. I'm like, woohoo! I mean, it was my biggest woohoo, because now I've actually shown that they can make those, once I make a configuration change out in the field, something that's unauthorized, now the operators can identify it on the back end. Now they can create instant response procedures. And that's really what I'm shooting for in my security research. Mitigations, as I mentioned, most people do a lot of the mitigations that are going to be outlined right here. Um, you know, residential, we talked about the residential meters, you know, making sure you uh, put those in the proper area. Uh, actually, deploying a million meters with a, and having a million different passwords is probably another security vulnerability. So, you know, but you can still do it intelligently. So we've talked them about that. Um, obviously, we just talked about incident response plans. Tamper alerts, you know, on the smart meters, maybe not so much because there's so many out there, but definitely on the aggregation points, you know, for the full tops, you want to do that. Encryption has to be done properly, we all understand that. The configuration integrity check, we just talked about that. Uh, some people break the standard a little bit just on their meters, they send an authentication code, but what's great about that is I can still assess, I can still build into my tool kit. You know, the, uh, the method to pass the token. But what they do is if you pass the wrong token, um, they immediately shut off the optical port uh, for a period of 20 minutes. So it makes it really difficult to, uh, um, to work on those. So, you know, start thinking about different things if you're gonna be researching this. Um, I already thought about, you know, the uh, um, wireless optical port readers. You know, uh, we talked about that with the Zigbee. Optical spraying. Okay, uh, if I'm standing 10 feet away from a meter, and shooting IRI because I know the timing now. Okay, if I do that and I never touch the meter, do I do anything? So, you know, thinking about that, making people understand that. Uh, uh, the wireless snippers that we talked about putting in the aggregation points and putting, you know, you'll, uh, they could probably detect the ones that are in the meters, but the aggregation points are really my concern for the snippers that you just put in and leave them in place to, to send data back to you. And then obviously the frequency hopping, you know, that's probably the next big concern, being able to do this type of stuff and get that radio information to understand so that you can do all of this stuff wirelessly via the radio. That's uh, something that I'm really interested in and we're working towards. I mentioned that the vendors have helped us. Ed Barrasset from Elster, you know, he actually contributed code to make sure that, you know, I'm working with more meters than I had actually worked with. Uh, Robert Cornell from ICOM is a constant constantly encouraging me, and he actually worked very hard to make sure that our toolkit is uh, being used by the research team 
that their developers understand it and they know to talk about this stuff as well. And then we're picking great positive feedback from a lot of the vendors except for one. I couldn't have done this without support from a lot of a lot of people. I, I listed some people on here. Um, I, I obviously listed people. Uh, once again, my name is Cutaway. Uh, thank you to everybody for coming. There is going to be a Q&A afterwards. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.